There may be plenty of anime that I've never seen, but there are not a lot of anime that I've never heard of, and every day the pool of shows that I've never heard of gets smaller and smaller as I keep discovering new things. So every once in a while, while I still can, I like to just drive out to FYE and find something that I've never heard of whatsoever, buy it, and try to watch it. And that's what I've just done with Phantom Quest Corps, or Core. I have never heard of this, I have no idea what it's like or about. It looks old, maybe late 90s, early 2000s probably. It's released by Pioneer, so that means it's pre-Genion, and Pioneer changed their name to Genion in like 2004, so this is definitely before 2004. I have not looked up anything about this. I am about to watch it completely blind with no information. I think, I'm pretty sure, that it's only four episodes long and that this is the whole show, because there's nothing to demark that it is longer than that. There's no like indication that this is volume one. It says perfect collection, so I don't know if this is part of a bigger series, like if this is an OVA of Phantom Quest and then there's Core or something. The font on the back of this box, uh, you probably can't see it, but it's atrocious. I'll put in another clip of it. Party girl Ayaka Kisaragi turned her late night lifestyle into a business that gives new meaning to the term graveyard shift. While it may seem easier for Ayaka to round up troublesome spirits than to put on a corporate spin on her own freewheeling habits, she calls upon a powerful but quirky cater of cabalists to solve each case with flair and style. Too bad style doesn't pay the bills. No matter the terrors the Ark may can bring, Ayaka will be sure they get get a kiss goodnight from Phantom Quest Core if she can wake up in time in all caps. <laughs> this sounds awesome. Oh, I'm excited. Let's do this. Watching the first episode of this show, I was actually pleasantly surprised that it's kind of fun. I wasn't expecting that it was animated by Madhouse, which makes me even more surprised that I've never heard of it. And also it had Yoshiaki Kawajiri, the guy who directed Ninja Scroll, work on the opening theme, apparently. It has this good feel to it. It's got that late 90s Madhouse feel, almost similar to like when they did Cardcaptor Sakura. Obviously it's not quite like that, because that's a kid's show and this one's more geared towards adults, but it's got that sort of homey, really well crafted vibe, which makes it fun to watch and very easy to watch, even though plot-wise it was kind of hard to tell what it was going for at first. As it went along, I got the sense that it, it was sort of meant to take this mysterious and potentially scary situation, like a vampire going around kidnapping women, and then sort of subvert it and make it silly. Like the first vampire we actually meet, he, even though he's this powerful, you know, supernatural creature, he's kind of just a derpy, weird guy who doesn't seem all that harmful, they quickly subvert the idea that the vampires are all going to be these scary badasses. So it's a light-hearted comedy show with horror trappings and, and action trappings, and it's pretty entertaining, and it looks nice. I won't say that it, like, wowed me or anything, but it was a lot better than my extremely low expectations would have led me to think. This fucking opening is just... It's beautiful. There's such a massive tone shift between the opening, like, part, and then, like, it changes from this, like, huge dramatic song into this funny song, which fits in with what I was saying about how the show is kind of trying to subvert, like, uh, like its own atmosphere. Like, it goes full goofy in this part. Look at this guy's, like, pissed off, like, just kind of, ugh, face as he carries her drunk ass home. That just tells you everything about these characters. In fact, that image of the moon's eye opening up and, like, just that over top of those characters in that situation seems like it spells out this whole show. Oh my god, I fucking love this girl so much. That whole scene was incredible. She was just drunk in the back of a limo, singing karaoke over his, like, PA, like, on the street. Depressed. Oh my god. This is magnificent. She's still going. I really want to know what this little, I think, boy's relationship is to Ayaka. Like, he's, he's her secretary, assistant, caretaker. Who is he? If it's a he. This episode is definitely taking it 
much slower than the first one did. That's a good thing, because uh, the first one, for a while, I couldn't tell where it was going or what the hell was going on. But this one's taking its time to develop the characters a lot more. Something I mentioned in the first recording, where I fucked up the audio and forgot to mention again, is that uh, I, I think I said in the intro of this video that it's called Phantom Quest Core, like like C O R P S, but it's actually Corp like corporation. I didn't notice the lack of an S. They left space for one. It looks like it should say it. But uh, there is no S there, so it's, it's just corp. Oh, there's a dot. There's a little dot there. So, yeah. Whoa. That was cool. Whoa, this dude just got fucked. I gotta say, when this show gets into its action scenes, it tends to look pretty fucking nice. Uh, the way I put it in my first recording was, uh, some early Sakuga moments. So this episode kinda did exactly what I hoped it would do. It toned down the focus on the mission and focused more on the character development. And I think it worked. It's a good episode. This is a good show. So in between watching episodes two and three, I actually did some research on this show. Um, I found out it, it was made in 1994 up through 1995, so it's even older than I thought. It looks so nice that, uh, it's kind of surprising to know it's 94 and not like 99, 2000. My feeling that it looked a lot like Cardcaptor Sakura was pretty justified because the same, this, the directors who worked on this show are some of the same ones who worked on Cardcaptor Sakura. I mean, obviously Madhouse did both shows so they're going to look kind of similar, but when I say that the show feels similar or when I say that it looks similar, I don't often just mean the animation style. I usually mean more like the shot composition and directing style. The thing about a show like this is that it's like, it's fundamentally enjoyable. Like, it's fun to watch, the characters are cool and everything, but it's like, there's nothing like special or memorable about it. And I feel like that was fine in 1994. Like, like if I had just been watching this because it was all I had, or it was, it was around, you know, I was just taking every anime I could get, I would have loved this show. It's so well made that why not? But, uh, you know, in a world where I can just click away and have a hundred shows that are really memorable and interesting to watch that I still haven't seen yet, it's harder to, like, justify watching something like this, you know? If I had seen everything and this was just some... <clears throat> something on... on that, that was left, I would, uh, feel better about it. But, like, just watching it now is like, man, this is fun! I should be watching something else though. <laughs> Luckily it's only four episodes though, so there's not much, not too much guilt to be had there. One of my uh, friends was telling me that he apparently has seen this show on Laserdisc back in the day. Now it's not surprising that it's on Laserdisc because Pioneer are the people who literally created Laserdisc. So back in the 90s they were probably trying to push Laserdisc really hard. A lot of anime uh, came out through Pioneer on Laserdisc back then. He also said that they used to have, like, these demo Laserdisc DVDs or just be like one episode or part of an episode would come out. I don't know if those were, like, free or what. I don't know how you would get one, but apparently they were real. They really wanted Laserdisc to become the next big thing and it just never did. It's worth mentioning um, that this show has, like, it has a decent amount of fan service in it, but I think all of it's really tastefully done and sort of believable in the situations where it's happening where like you know it'll show the main characters uh short, sort of like you know half naked in bed but it's just because she sleeps naked or you know all the situations that have fan service e things feel natural and it's never pushed in your face it just kind of you know she's just hot like it's not like showing you her boobs like hey it's her boobs it's like oh she's just doing something and she happens to be a hot girl so I guess in a way it's not really fan service except for the fact that obviously they're aware making the show that people are going to find it hot 
Also, all the women are badasses in this show, so <laughs> that works too. Once again, this episode has done the take scary thing, which was this this creepy zombie guy. But it turns out it's actually the nerdy kid who was the, the boyfriend who died. So, once again, we've subverted the scary thing to make it something kind of dull and, and funny. What's weird about this show is that they would choose to give it an episodic structure when it's only four episodes long. Like, I don't know if maybe they intended it to be longer or, or what, but like, it's a four episode OVA and each episode is a standalone story, which seems more like something you'd expect from a TV show. And it's funny too because apparently when this came out, everyone was comparing it to Ghost Sweeper Mikami because that was airing at the same time, it had like the same plot, and was like 39 episodes long. So it's weird that they would even do this when it's so similar to something else that was happening with the structure that made more sense. Guys, this scene. I'm, I'm talking just so that you'll be able to see what's happening here because it's amazing. It's worth mentioning here that uh, <clears throat> the voice actress who plays the main character, and I don't remember what the actress's name is because I, I looked at it online earlier, she also sings the opening and ending song. And she sings her ass off in these two songs. She's a great singer, which is funny because she purposely sings poorly during all the karaoke scenes. And her voice acting is my favorite thing about this whole OVA. Like, she really sells the character she makes her fun and interesting and I think without her performance it would I would significantly be enjoying this less I don't think I would care about her character if she wasn't performed so well I should note that the subtitles on this DVD I'm guessing are dub titles where they just took the script from the dub and put it in because uh, I've noticed a lot of lines that I certainly wouldn't translate that way. Not to say that I'm better at Japanese than the people who translate this show, but it just seems like certain lines have, have been changed in a, in a severe way. Not in a way that really changes the feel of anything, but, uh, but ones that make me think, that's probably what they said in the dub. I like where this episode is going. The characters, uh, there's been a rival company has opened up and are taking all the jobs away from Ayako and it's just a massive threat to her way of life. They could have played it off as a joke but it really is seriously like she's just losing everything. And uh, it's definitely uh, as someone who feels that being connected to her character is the most interesting part about this show, she is the, the, the most involving element of the show. Um, and now they're all <laughs> to work normal jobs. It definitely makes it hit a little harder than the episodic plots about other characters who we don't know at all. It's worth noting that the director, Morio Asaka, wanted to... Apparently he wanted to expand on the relationship between these two characters, but they didn't have time. I don't know how long they intended this show to be, and I haven't found any information yet about why there's only four episodes, but apparently there is... There was intentions or at least desires for it to be longer. You know, I saw a comment on one of the Mal reviews, the My Anime List reviews, where they were saying like, that this show only had like a few songs or something and that they were sick of hearing the same music in every episode. Which is a weird complaint anyway, because every show reuses its music, but the music in this show is awesome. I don't know how you could get sick of it. I'm also not entirely sure if that's even true. Apparently there were like, there were two soundtrack releases from this show. I imagine one of them was just the the, the, um, the singles for the opening or ending theme, but there was musical releases tied to this show. Episode 4 has definitely been the silliest one so far, but uh, it's a lot of fun to watch. Look at this place, this is cool as hell. The fight scenes are cool as hell in this show. just really, really enthusiastically animated.
Oh my god! <laughs> well, that ended up being a really cool final battle. Oh shit, it's still happening! Oh my god, they showed boobies! After a- They showed the nipples after a whole show of not showing them. I wonder if that was meant to be like a payoff just because they saved it for the last- The end of the last episode, we finally see your nipples pop out. Interesting. And that's it. It's over. Well. I gotta say, I really enjoyed Phantom Quest Corps. Corp. I'd never heard of it at all. I watched it expecting nothing, and it was actually pretty good. It's kind of odd that I hadn't heard of this, because it is a Madhouse show, and it is directed by Morio Asaka, and I've looked into him before, because he did Cardcaptor Sakura. He's done some other good shows that are not coming to mind right now, but I'll put them on screen. Um that I enjoyed so I think he's a great director and this was a good show unfortunately it's only four episodes they're almost completely episodic so it's not really that memorable I could easily see just vaguely like you know a year from now I'll just be like oh yeah that was that show I did that video on that was all right um the voice acting was great the music was great the animation was great and the writing was not bad I mean as far as episodic shows go it was entertaining it's definitely the kind of thing that's like a I'm bored, let's put something on type of show. A rainy day show, if you will. Uh, but a good one at being that. Like I said, in the 90s, I probably would have loved this show. Like, I mean, I was not me in the 90s because I was a kid. Like, I was like seven. No, when this came out, I would have been younger than that. I would have been like three or four when this came out in Japan. But nonetheless, I think this is good for just a I feel like watching anime I want to see something that looks nice and has likable characters it's watchable not everything needs to be a masterpiece so I thought it was perfectly fine the way it was I don't know if I'd ever watch it again but maybe like in 10 years when I've completely like looking at my collection and like what the fuck is this I don't remember this at all phantom quest corps where the hell did I pull this out of then maybe I'll watch it and that's all I'll see you later everybody